it is in his characterization and style that Dickens performs his most distinctive authorial magic and David Copperfield contains some of the most famous fictional creations in his panoply. Chief among these in the category of possible heroes is the impec impecunious but convivial, convivial Mr. Micawber with his comically dramatic extremes of optimism and despair. Like David and Dickens, he delights in the power of language, writing in his own elaborate sort of legal phraseology that he is crushed a mere hour and a half before he enjoys a warm and jovial dinner during which he makes no mention of any catastrophe having occurred to him. If the novel lacks the broader comedy of Dickens, earlier works like Nicholas Nickleby, 1838-9, or The Old Curiosity Shop, 1840-1, it does render human foibles with much affectionate humor. But say Trotwood's aversion to donkeys on her land and Mr. Dick's memorial riding and kite flying, Mrs. Micawber's adamant and repeated vow, I never will desert Mr. Micawber. Among those characters who will have no claim to herohood within the novel, Uriah Heep is prime villain, okay? With his obsequious humbleness and serpentine writhing, with his lashless, virtually lidless eyes like red suns, and his calm, clammy, skeletal hands, he is a reptilian being to whom David is attracted in every repulsion. There are undoubted sexual connotations to heap serpent-like body. And David's aversion to him intensifies exponentially when he frowningly insinuates to David that he is not only out to gain control over Wakefield's business, but aims to marry Agnes. The thought of a sexual union between Uriah and Agnes fills David with a horror so strong that he feels like a running hip through the body with a red hot poker. The distaste for heap that we, we as readers share with David is created, of course, by Dickens' vivid and vibrant style. Images such as those of Jane Mordstone with her steel feather accessories who look at David out of the pickle jar with as great an excess of soreness as if her black eyes had absorbed its contents, or Mr. Mills blowing his flute as if he would gradually blow his whole being into the large hole at the top and ooze away at the keys. Okay, are also examples of the spatial effects Dickens uses to engage the reader in his novelistic illusion. When he began writing David Copperfield, Charles Dickens, 1812-70, at 37, was already famous for his conjuring with words and was himself a hero to many of his readers. Initially published serially, David Copperfield appeared in 20 sold as 19 monthly cards from May 1849 to November 1850, okay? His eighth of fourteen and a half novels, David Copperfield sits securely in the middle of Dickens' writing career and in the middle of the 19th century. The values it expresses on its surface, at least, are very much mid-Victorian middle-class values, moral earnestness, industriousness, separate spheres for men and women, and in a broad sense, knowing one's place. A long novel with a happy ending full of coincidences, concerned with personal growth and memories in its form and content, it epitomizes what we have tended to regard as the Victorian novel. Okay?